Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, my name is Stefan Rammelt from Dresden University Hospital and I want to share some additional insights on our article published in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery on the pathanatomy of the anterolateral distal tibial fragment in ankle fractures. Why did we perform this study? Over the recent years and decades, it became apparent that fixation of posterior malleolar fractures frequently restores integrity and stability of the syndesmosis. It restores anatomy of the tibial incisura, thus alleviating fibular reduction, and it may restore joint congruity in case of impaction. Now, the anterior lateral distal tibial fragment shares a lot of properties with the posterior malleolus. So it may also be considered an anterior or fourth malleolus, as it also gives attachment to the syndesmoid ligament and fractures may involve both the incisura and the joint. In fact, when we looked at 140 fractures that had a complete set of radiographs and CTs that involved the anterior we found three basic patterns. Type 1, which was the case in more than 50%, involved a small bony avulsion of the anterior syndesmotic ligament. Type 2 involved both the joint and the incisura, and type 3 involved an additional impaction of the anterolateral distal tibial plafond, which was the case in 11%. We found an increasing proportion of pronation abduction type injuries in increasing types of anteromalleolar fractures, and we found a decreasing proportion of supination external rotation injuries with increasing number of classification. And uh, when we uh, looked at all the malleolar fractures that were treated at our hospital over the same period, we found the overall prevalence of 12% of anti-malleolar fractures in all ankle fractures in adults. And uh, we found very few isolated anti-malleolar fractures when we excluded adolescents. The patients with anterior malleolar fractures were significantly older and had a significantly higher proportion of pronation type injuries. So to conclude, the knowledge of the 3D pathanatomy of the anterolateral distal tibial fragment may be very useful in planning reduction and fixation of complex malleolar fractures. And we should be generous with using CT scans if such an injury is suspected because there are many reports on overlooked fractures of the anterior malleolus, which lead to malreduction requiring revision. What we do not know yet is the outcome of these injuries. There's few studies out there, and this will be the next thing we are undertaking. Thank you very much for your attention.